This is Abia COVID-19 update. Abia COVID-19 update. The federal government also called on authorities in various states to appropriately declare the results of COVID-19 tests conducted as quickly as possible. The PTF chairman, that's uh, Mr. Boss Mustafa, explained that the call was necessary to ensure early detection, which he said would ultimately translate to treatment and leveling of the curve of the virus in the country. He acknowledged then that the nation's uh, sample collection was low and advised authorities in the states to ramp up their testing. On the resumption of schools, I know you're waiting for that. Many Nigerians had felt that the resumption of exit classes uh, was indication that other students would resume soon. Well, the Nigeria's uh, Minister of State for Education, Chukwe Mekanwajuba, said during the briefing of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 that no date has been fixed yet for school resumption, even though the federal government had continued to engage stakeholders. Uh, yesterday, the minister also spoke on situation of tertiary institutions. Mr. Onwajuba said about 78 privately owned universities were insisting that they were ready to res for resumption while the response from government owned universities was still 50 50. The minister urged students of tertiary institutions protesting to con the continued closure of their schools to be a little more patient with the government. I think I should uh, bring up the audio right now. Yes is still out. Rates of infections are not dropping. Positivity rates are not dropping. Pursuing reopening. We are presented to all the tertiary institutions in Nigeria. And you just don't only look at all the, the 200 or so universities and colleges of technology. There are really a lot of other colleges. College of nursing, colleges of uh, agriculture, colleges of um, several colleges. There are nearly about 600 post you know, post um, secondary institutions available, all waiting to uh, take on this signal whether to reopen. And the guidance we have given, and for which we are receiving feedbacks from many of these institutions at the moment, includes a gamut of items that you need to prepare. We've uh, reviewed responses from about 78 universities already. Um, most of them are private universities who are already insistent that they are ready to go and um, many public universities we from the uh, state-owned universities we have 50 50 response and um, so we're working to upscale that and make sure that everybody actually is ready to go so i urge our students who are already who have actually exercised a lot of patience along with their parents because i know even my own children they are begin to think they've had enough of me. I understand that. Well, it is the first, uh, the second edition of the program for the week today, being Tuesday, the twenty fifth of August, two thousand and twenty. My name is Michael Oni. On this program, we highlight daily reports of the interministerial committee on the control of COVID nineteen in Abia State, as well as the state governor, Doctor Okeze Ipazu's efforts in ensuring that the state is safe from the virus this program is running simultaneously every weekday uh, mondays through fridays on several radio stations in the state bca 88.1 fm flow 94.9 fm vision africa radio 104.1 fm buzz 89.7 fm and real 99.1 fm uh, let me bring you up to date on figures and updates on coronavirus globally global number of deaths stands at 817,090 as at 8 a.m today meanwhile the total number of infections worldwide is at uh, 23 million 818,450 also, the number of recovered cases at 16,085,961. Hong Kong is set to ease some coronavirus measures from the 28th of August, allowing venues such as cinemas and beauty parlors to reopen and restaurants uh, to extend dining hours. Now, Hong Kong has been has seen a resurgence of locally transmitted cases since the start of July, but the daily number has fallen from triple digits 
in recent weeks to low double digits and indonesia has secured a supply of up to 60 million doses of potential covid 19 vaccines from china and the united arab emirates uh, the supply is part of the 290 million vaccines that will be made available for indonesia throughout 2021 that's according to the to the president of that country joko widodo uh, during cabinet meeting and some 172 con countries are engaging with the who led covax plan designed to ensure equitable access to COVID-19 vaccines when finally available. That's according to the World Health Organization. But more funding is urgently needed for countries uh, to make a binding and uh, countries should also start making a binding commitment. Uh, that's according to WHO Director General Tedros Ghebreyesus and uh, at a media briefing yesterday. In Nigeria, Ahead of the resumption of international flights at, uh, at the nation's airports, Nigeria has reported 321 more cases of coronavirus, uh, the bringing the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 52,448, while the latest figure is just a case lower than the tally reported yesterday they had that on this show uh, the ncdc noted that the additional cases were reported from 23 states of the federation and the federal capital territory and of the uh, cases reported yesterday abia state uh, recorded just uh, one new case yesterday although the total number of confirmed cases positive cases in the country uh, is near the 53,000 mark more people have continued to recover from the disease uh, data released by the ncdc and its latest update on the outbreak revealed that the additional 321 infected patients have been successfully treated and also discharged uh, from various isolation centers also in the country. Uh, the nation's recovery figures now stands at uh, 32,257, which is representing over 74.70% of the infection, while 12,287 cases are still active as at uh, today. Well, uh let's uh, look at the death toll uh, we have a uh, 1004 uh, of course and it has continued to increase as although at a slow pace now let's uh, go straight to the discussion for today we're revisiting what is happening at the isolation centers if you are very keen with what is happening with the data especially uh, the data coming from abia state you will discover that uh, the number of deaths in abia state has increased we have uh, according to the data uh, obtained from the ncdc uh, the number of persons that have died from coronavirus in Abia State now has risen to seven. We have uh, Dr. Ijo Maunduka. She is a regular on the program joining me this morning live uh, from the isolation center. Hello, good morning to you, doctor. Good morning, Michael. How yeah, are you doing this I'm morning? I'm doing fine. Uh, good to have you join us this morning uh, on Abia State uh, COVID-19 update. So we want you to bring us up to speed uh, concerning uh, the, the death we have an increase in the number of deaths recorded at the isolation centers and it's uh, a source of worry to us here as far as uh, trying to sensitize the uh, people to keep staying safe yeah michael thank you very much it's not about the number of deaths because one death is actually too many mm. the bottom line is that we don't want any deaths we don't actually want people to come down with covid but if eventually they do let them seek help early enough because early diagnosis and treatment is the basis for quick recovery and probably full recovery from the disease remember we have two isolation centers in the state running we have that at the um, amachara okay yes, amachara and fmc so yes. cumulatively if we have seven it should be from the two centers, centers. yes, yes. Uh, okay can, can you give us some uh, specifics uh, maybe details uh, not names anyways uh, but uh, details of what happened and uh, when they presented themselves what they presented with maybe the spo2 level and some uh, medical details yeah I'll, I'll particularly want to talk about what the one we had last week last week um thursday okay last week wednesday thursday um the death of an 81 year old woman okay her test results came out after she died unfortunately so that means she came in with symptoms 
she was bad she was breathless her spo2 when she came was below 80 percent she had comorbidities from that from her history we got that she had um she she was being managed for hypertensive heart disease at some point mm. mama was obese obese i mean she was obese obesity, obesity yes mama mama had an underlying comorbidity she was hypertensive now mama is 81 mama was 81 years with comorbidity with hypertensive heart disease and she came in bad so we kept her in our case holding area the case holding area is where we keep patients who come in bad who don't who have not been tested positive for COVID. okay we so, have so suspected decided, cases yes well yeah suspected cases the state decided to have that case holding area from the experiences we we've had in the past from hospitals rejecting such patients when such patients present in private hospitals and even in some government public hospitals with such symptoms bad symptoms of suspected covid they just turn them down they tell them go to amachara go to amachara so we had to get those them um, we had to get those words set out and created to house to keep patients who come in bad and who we are suspecting for COVID. So in that in the case holding area, we take their samples and send for investigations. And within um within six hours, let me just give that a long time though. But because they're in the case holding areas, once their samples are collected, they are run they are, they, the tests are run as an emergency and the results come out within six hours max. Mm. So Mama came in and kept her the case holding area and uh, when we keep them at the case holding area we still manage them for suspected covid cases so we just go ahead and give them the full medications that we give any covid patient pending when the result would come out but unfortunately for mom, mama mama we lost mama at the case holding area before her result came out but the result came out soon just soon after mama died and it was covid positive Let's look at Mama's scenario. When Mama came in, her two daughter, her two daughters, and her house help and her driver came with her. I mean, they brought her to the hospital. Yes. One of the daughters was down, was ill, and she requested that she's ill. She's re she requested for her samples. Not that she requested. We decided to take take the samples, her samples as well. Yes, alongside with Mama Zoom. So when mama's results mama when mama's results came in positive for both of them their results were released at the same time positive positive mama zone and the daughter zone then the other con contacts the the first the other daughter the elder daughter we now took samples from the elder daughter the house help the all her contacts people that were around her so as i speak three of mama's contacts are with us in the isolation center That's her two daughters and her driver the question is where did mama get covid, COVID. That, that's the big question yes. here then the history we got from one of the daughters from while they were in the isolation center both of them <laughs> both of them were like oh go on your mama oh go on your mama this that was speaking evil that was speaking evil oh go on your mama covid that and they were like blaming themselves i was there i told them no there's no cause for anybody to take the blame mm. now mm. but i didn't want anybody to feel bad they were already in our care and custody by the time we know i know we do a lot of psychological support for mm. our patients in their social center when they come in they come in devastated as in oh this is a death sentence so i'm going to be wrapped up here i'm going to stuck in here for two weeks so we do a lot of psychological support for them so at that point when they were arguing i knew there was i knew there was time to step in i told them no that this is not time where you will blame this person or blame that apparently the younger one that came in with mama ill was helping out with the elder one who was the first person to be ill first of august because she gave us the history that she's been ill since first week in august that she was ill since first week in august and her younger sister came to the house now sui and miracle if i'll use her words and mama was also with them so you see this scenario and mama driver mama, maybe mm -hmm. mama will be driven in her car to come and see to come and see her daughter who yes. is ill 
and then meeting this other younger person, Nasu Mama, Nasu, the elder daughter, Miracle. So we are not sure now. That is why we talk about community transmission. Mm. Now the younger sister was telling the elder sister, the elder sister, "Okuina agon, onuina agon, ige buteko di bunye mama, di abunye kwa ya inile." You know, but I had to tell them, no, this is not a time to blame anybody. Mama, we've lost mama. Yes. Okay. So let, let, let's go to lessons. Uh, from that story now it's very important that uh, when you get symptoms especially malaria symptoms because i can remember my personal story i was down with malaria uh, but it wasn't confirmed until after i did my covid 19 test because i was scared myself uh, thinking it was covid 19 so let, let's get to the lessons yeah, to be learned uh, from the such lessons, scenarios yes, exactly the lessons to be learned one I, I said it last week, enlightening the public. COVID-19 symptoms present with my, as malaria symptoms, as respiratory tract infection symptoms. And there's actually nothing wrong. And since we are in a malaria endemic zone, mm. Nigeria is endemic for malaria. There's no harm. Okay, let's think of malaria first. Treat yourself for malaria. Take, take um, your usual anti-malarial medications thereafter the symptoms are not abating think covid mm. in fact i think the first thing is as you're treating for malaria please think COVID. take, take covid 19 tests exactly think uh, covid so. come to our match isolation center we have now we're in the field running community testing go to your lga know when if they have come to your your lga if they haven't wait for them to come but here in our natural isolation center the samples are being collected on daily basis come here and submit yourself for sample collection in other states we we'll hear that um, sample materials are exhausted but here in our natural isolation center or in the state i don't think we, we we run out of materials for sample collection for more than one or two hours or three hours and, it's, and the materials are here and I've not seen a case where somebody comes in here and the person's samples are not collected. Sample, person samples are not collected. So I encourage the public, let's submit ourselves. COVID has come to stay with us. I'm looking at COVID as going to be endemic, endemic in the sense that it's going to stay with us. With this community transmission, a lot of people come down with COVID, they get well, you know. So for Mama's case, the, the children were asymptomatic. But it had to manifest so much in Mama and we lost her. Mom, considering her age and comorbidity and late presentation were all contributory factors to the demise of Mama that we lost last week. So, so please, still talking to the public, let's think COVID. COVID is still with us. When I see people still saying COVID, ah, la, la, COVID, we, we don't have COVID anymore, I'm, I, I get scared of what will happen in a few weeks and what is still happening now because we get you get those patients rushed into isolation center and it's on and on and on so we should uh, ensure that we mask ourselves also uh, wash our, our hands with uh, soap and under running water and also keep using our hand sanitizers uh, these are some of the protocols that uh, were followed initially at the start of uh, the campaign and remember when we had the index case in nigeria that was in february but it looks like uh, nigerians are already throwing caution into the wind if you take a look at what is happening on the streets now yeah, my father, yeah i agree with you we've thrown caution to the winds we have um, forgotten our protocols we've forgotten how we started with combating COVID. It's as if everybody is relaxed. So I still want to encourage us, let's not forget our face mask. Let's not forget using our sanitizers, washing our hands regularly, social, physical distances, mm. avoid touching surfaces, big, um, rails, door handles. And when you do, please wash your hands regularly. We should not forget that. We should know that COVID is still here. We are still having the fight. I, I will, uh, Dr. Ijoma Anduka, I would like you also uh, so that you highlight the importance of staying safe for the vulnerable because Mama uh, was 
in the group the vulnerable according to the categories of uh, those uh, that are likely to contract uh, COVID-19 easily uh, that uh, highlighted by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control so I would like you to you know uh, highlight uh, the importance of staying safe for the vulnerable those with uh, uh, comorbidity and also uh, underlying illnesses yeah, my God. The, yes the vulnerable group the elderly are still top on the list. Those with comorbidities irrespective of age. Comorbidities irrespective of age. Then elderly, then elderly with comorbidities. Pregnant, pregnant women are also of, at high risk. Um, so it's good we stay safe ourselves. As younger people, as people who don't have comorbidities, we could run the full course of um, the COVID cycle asymptomatic, but we could get in contact with our family members who are among this vulnerable group and transmit the virus to them. The manifestation in them will be quite different or it's quite different from what we have in a younger person or with anybody that hasn't gotten any comorbidity. So it's important we we'll keep ourselves, we we'll stay safe to protect our loved ones and our family members, our elderly and aged patients, our parents. Okay, uh, apart from uh, Mama's case, a very, very pathetic story you shared with us this morning. Apart from Mama's case, let's uh, talk about uh, the general well-being of other patients uh, at the isolation center there at Amachara. And also, how are you and other doctors and other health practitioners there coping uh, with uh, the war against this uh, pandemic? Thank you, Michael. Our patients at the isolation center at the moment are doing very well. We celebrated one of our patients last week. He, he, he came in. He's our reference patient. Okay. What do you mean by reference talking, patient? He, he doesn't mind. What I mean by he, he, was, he was one of the patients. But he was the patient that kept us on our toes. We did not actually believe that he was going to make it. Wow. He came in without being tested for COVID. He was so bad. His um, SPO2 was below 60 he had comorbidities he was hypertensive and well his, his breathing was bad so and he, he was let me say not really eld yeah i would say elderly sort of and um, so deep he was depressed so we had a lot we, we celebrated him yesterday uh, last week when we discharged him from the isolation center these are some of the cases that yes uh, that make us very happy uh, hopefully hopefully they, they would like to talk to the media it's a uh, very uh, difficult getting across to some of those that discharge patients. Yeah, he, so, he told us that he, if you want to talk to him, I'll get across to him. All right, uh, please. Mm, yeah, I, I so will get back to you on that doing, later. Okay, our patients are doing quite well at the isolation center, very well. Uh, if you want to talk to any of them, you tell us, we'll get the consent and you talk to them over the media. Interesting. And for us here at the isolation center, we feel very devastated when we lose our patients. You know that you need to see us run to make sure if we could if we could fight death physically i can assure you the team here in amateur will fight death physically to make sure that one patient is kept alive one patient we, we save one patient from the from from the hands of covid here in isolation so that we are doing our best we are we, want, we really want to thank the abia state government the governor in particular for setting up this isolation center everything we need whatever we need to make sure our, pa our patients are comfortable and treated our drugs of course still remain free our patients are comfortable and on their medications the governor the government does that to provide everything we need special thanks also to the commissioner of health dr suji who who listen has a listening ear to where we tell him what we need our needs here and he provides them here at the isolation center we observe 100 percent infection prevention and control mm -hmm. measures all right we uh, don't joke with that yes i want to really appreciate i want to it. say uh, that uh, okay, not doctor. One, sorry not even one health worker here in in the isolation center has come down with covid not even oh, that's one wonderful person. That's, yes, that's uh, very wonderful. Thank you very much, and also congratulations on your uh, honor. I understand that you will be honored on Thursday. That's uh, 
Thank, uh, thank, you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do enjoy the okay. rest of your day. Thank you very thank much, you. Doctor. All right, uh, that's uh, Doctor Ijoma Unduka, uh, all the way from the Amateur Isolation Center. There, so it's very important you keep staying safe. Very, very important you keep following those protocols. Uh, they are not. We, we should not uh, throw caution to the wind yet. Let's uh, fight this battle to stand still and ensure that we kick COVID out of nigeria and also out of abia state thank you very much for being part of the program today abia state covid 19 updates the program returns tomorrow many thanks to the partner radio stations bca 88.1 fm flow 94.9 fm vision africa radio 104.1 fm buzz 89.7 fm and real 99.1 fm my name is michael oni stay safe and take responsibility. This is Abia COVID-19 update. Abia COVID-19 update.